In this lesson, we will be graphing linear equations. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to graph a linear equation given the equation. All right, the equation of the line is y equals mx plus b. So that's the slope-intercept form of an equation. We learned from doing stations that m is called the slope, and it's the number in front of the x value. So it's this number, whatever's in front of the x attached with the x, that's the slope. This value tells us how steep it is, so it's going to basically tell us how much the graph rises over how much the graph runs, and we're going to have that as y over x. All right. If m is positive, we will find the graph will point up, and if m is negative, the graph will point down as we go from left to right. All right, and then the last thing is my b. My b is going to be my y-intercept, and we learned that again when we were doing our stations activity. And that's just basically going to be where the graph touches the y-axis. Right? I find that when I'm graphing, it's easiest to graph the b first, and then we'll graph the slope, or the m. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and dig right into doing some graphing. I usually like to, when I look at the equation, since I know I'm going to be graphing b first, b is the number without the x, so I'm going to actually circle the b every time I do a problem. And this tells me that I'm going to start by um, touching the y-axis at negative 5. And another thing that I like to do, and I'm going to do this right now in all these problems, is I'm going to label the y-axis just to remember which one it is. Okay, so I'm going to start at negative 5 on the y-axis, so this is the y-axis, I'm going to start at negative 5 and put a point there. And then my slope is the 3. And I'm going to, when we do the slope, we actually would like to make it a fraction. So I'll make it a fraction by making it 3 over 1. Okay. Uh, in the previous page of notes, I said the upper number is going to tell us how much we rise, and the bottom number is going to tell us how much we run. So if I start at the point that I was at, I know that I have to rise 3 or go up 3, and then I'm going to run 1. So I'm going to run 1 to the right there. Whoop. And then I have my two points. One, two, three. Okay, again, let me see that one. Okay, and now I'm ready to connect my line. Then it should be a straight line, obviously. Okay, and then I am putting arrows at the end of my line to show that my line actually goes on forever and ever. Okay, the next problem, I'm again going to look at the part that does not have the x attached to it, and that is the plus 1. So that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to go to 1 on the y-axis, and I have my y-axis labeled, so that should help me out. All right, and this time, my rise is the number in the numerator, and my run is the number in the denominator again. This time I've got a negative here, so I'm going to let that negative go with the 2. So I'm going to start at 1, and instead of going up 2, I'm going to go down 2. So I've gone down 2, and then I'm still going to run 3 to the right. Okay, whoops. Okay, and when I do that, we'll go ahead and connect them. And then I've got my line, and I'm all set. Right? One thing that I wanted to say, I know a lot of people get into the habit of they go down 2 and then they think they need to go to the left 3 because it's negative. If I would have gone to the left 3, I would have had a, a line that was heading up, but since this has a negative slope, I know that I need a line that is heading down instead. All right, the next one, y equals x minus 3. What we want to do on this one is, again, we're going to circle the part that doesn't have the x on it, so that's where I know I need to start. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to negative 3 on the y-axis, and then you'll notice there is no number in front of the x, so I know if, I, if there's not a number there, I can put a 1, and then to make it a fraction, we'll just divide it by 1. So this top number, again, is my rise, and the bottom number is my run. So from here, I'm going to rise 1, and then run 1, and there we go. And then once again, I do put my arrows, and I have my line. Right, these next three examples, um, I would like you to pause the video at this point in time and try them yourself and then come back and you'll actually get to see if you have the right answer. Okay, and number four, <clears throat> I'm going to circle the six. I'm going to start up at six. Um, the rise is negative one, so I'm going to go down one and then I'm going to run five. And that is what my graph should look like. Right, once again, I will go to 5 to the right because other light, otherwise my line would be going up and I need it to go down. Right, number 5, I'm going to circle the number without the x, which is negative 2. So I'm going to start down at negative 2. And again, this was my y-axis. And then from here, I'm going to rise 1 and run 3. Okay, and then we can go ahead and connect them. And again, those arrows are very important. Okay, the last one, y equals 2x minus 4. I'm going to circle the negative 4. 
and that's going to be my y-intercept, so it's going to touch down at negative 4. And then my slope, I'm going to make that a fraction, so I'll make it 2 over 1, which means I'm going to, from that point, I'm going to rise 2 and run 1. And one thing that I probably should go through and check now, this had a negative slope, so my line should be going down. This one has a positive slope, so my line should be going up. And this one has also a positive slope, so my line should be going up. And that is what is happening. So that's basically how you graph lines.